Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the Diary of a UK Stock Investor podcast, episode number 29. Hey there guys, how's it going? Welcome to episode number 29 of the Diary of a UK Stock Investor podcast. My name is Chris Chillingworth. Hope you are doing well. Um, In today's episode, I want to talk about something that's pretty much just happened. Um, I'm recording this on a Monday, which is really rare for me because I usually record all my podcast episodes on a Tuesday, Wednesday, sometimes even a Thursday, and they tend to go out on a Thursday. Um, But I'm recording this early today because, or earlier in the week today, because we've had some news. Uh, and this has happened a couple of times over the last couple of years. But we've just banked, or I've personally just banked £1,488.17 pence by selling some shares. Now, I don't tend to sell shares very, very often. And in fact, I believe the last episode I was talking about how uh, there's only two times to ever really look at the price of your stocks. Uh, which is when you come to buy them and when it's time to sell them. And that's the only time you really need to look at them. And um, But today, uh, a couple of years in, I've sold some shares. And the question you might ask is, well, why? Well, um, we banked uh, 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 banked £1,488.87. And this was because back in June 2020, I notified my client base, my membership, Uh, of a stock that I had found called Medica Group PLC. This is a company based in Hastings, East Sussex in the UK. And uh, the big kind of crux of what they do essentially is um, uh, radiography, or radiology, I should say, sorry. Uh, And they basically, where the uh, NHS were massively short on um, radiology staff, essentially, Uh, qualified staff, what the NHS were now doing is they were uh, sending out work to private companies to then produce these reports. So essentially these were um, radiology staff employed by the company and their job essentially was to receive these scans, um, uh, x-rays, CT scans, that sort of thing, MRI scans from the uh, NHS, who didn't have the, the the staff to look at them themselves, and they would pay these companies essentially, or pay medical group, uh, their experts to review these scans and to produce the reports for the patient, essentially, or for the doctor uh, within the NHS. And they would obviously charge for that and how their business was set out. I won't go into detail on precisely how it all worked, but that's essentially what Medica Group did. And I, it wasn't because of what they did that I was particularly interested in. Uh, it was more to do with the success of the business. Uh, they they had a what we, we might refer to as a moat around their business. It was difficult for anyone else to come along and compete with them for certain reasons. Uh, financially, they were doing fantastically well. They were making wonderful profit margins. They were reinvesting a big chunk of that profit every year into the, the reinvestment of their own growth. Uh, and they were re- also reinvested in expanding that moat that they had around them. This is Warren Buffett's concept of a moat around a castle, stopping anyone else coming along and competing, essentially. Uh, and so there were certain aspects of this company that they were building upon that stopped other companies from being able to do the same sort of thing, which puts them in a really strong position because they kind of have this monopoly on this like, this kind of area. Um and so anyway, I'd done all my analysis on this company. I liked what I was seeing. It ticked all of my boxes. And so I uh, contacted my clients in June 2020. So getting on for three years ago now. And I basically said, this is why I like this company. Here's all the information. Here's all the research and analysis that I've done. I've put it all in a PDF. Bush out to out to all my clients, out to my membership that pay me every month to get that information. And at the time of doing that, the shares were trading at one pound thirty five pence per share, and they were trading at a level that made sense made sense to buy it at one pound thirty five so some of the companies that we look at the shares aren't pri- they there's a wonderful underlying business. We would love to own shares in the company, but the shares aren't priced right they're too expensive in in many cases with this company 
uh, medical group, the the uh, ticker code is MGP, Mike Golf Papa. Uh, MGP trading at one pound thirty five pence per share. It was a price that made perfect sense to be buying at. So in June 2020, when I found the company, I bought some, and I actually bought some at one pound twenty five because the obviously the prices are fluctuating constantly. So I managed to take the opportunity to buy at one pound twenty five. In July, the very next month, I bought some more back at one pound thirty five. In November 2021, I bought some more at a pound, one pound a share, because the price fell. In April 2021, I bought some more at one pound fifty, so the price had obviously gone back up and above the original entry price, but I was still buying at one pound fifty. It still made sense to buy, and even in October 2021, I bought some more at one pound sixty a share. And overall, at the, at the point of kind of uh, this morning, I, I guess. I had I owned about two thousand five hundred and forty pounds fifty one pence worth of shares in MGP, and I was planning one hundred percent to buy more MGP. One of the companies on my list that I really liked, and I wanted to expand my position on them. However, some news came out this morning. Today, uh, the company announced they were being taken over, and the controlling company that have come in to. Uh, buy out the business, they've agreed to pay shareholders £2.12 pence per share to take ownership of the business and then essentially delist them from the London Stock Exchange. So uh, I went to my, my broker's account, had a look, had a look at the situation and the shares were trading at a sale price. So you were able to sell your shares at a price of £2.12, pence, which was exactly the same amount that the the controlling company that coming in to take over uh, were were offering shareholders. So and that's typical. It happens quite often uh, where you know the share price will just go to that price at that point, and people aren't going to uh, the market's probably not going to exceed that two pound twelve pence. Although it may it can happen. It has happened in the past. Uh, but if it's any lower than that, then you you the point is you probably want to hold until you actually get paid your two pound twelve pence. Uh, but if it goes any higher, then you kind of you probably want to sell on the market for higher than what you're actually going to end up with when the shareholders actually push through the purchase. So uh, I just decided you know the right thing for me was if the price on the market was the same as the price that I'm going to be eventually getting from uh, the takeover, then I'll just sell now. Because the takeover was definitely happening. From all the news reports that I've read today, it's it's a done deal by the looks of things. And so I've sold. Sold my position at £2.12. pence, And made a profitable return, including the dividends that I've made on them over the last three years, of £1,488.87. pence. That is a uh, a percentage return that I've achieved of 58.6% return profit so pretty damn good uh, nearly 60% return over nearly three years so it's been a good little stock for me in my portfolio now the returns not huge I didn't have a strong enormous position in the stock unfortunately I would have loved to have done but just didn't get that far uh, over the last three years uh, some of my clients did far better than I did uh, John P messaged me this morning or emailed me sorry said that he had 6,452 shares and he'd spent an average purchase cost of £1.12. So obviously, depending on when you buy your stocks, you, you're going to average out your purchase price at different levels. And he averaged out a purchase price of one one pound twelve pence, which was great, better than me. My average purchase price was about one pound twenty seven. I think it worked out as I'm not sure. Uh, but so he he got in essentially. He built up his portfolio of these shares much cheaper than I did, and he spent about seven thousand two hundred and twenty six pounds on his shares. He sold them today, like I did, two pound twelve pence, and he's made a, a return, a profit. So uh, he's spent seven thousand two hundred and twenty six pounds he made thirteen thousand six hundred and seventy eight pounds back on those shares so he made a profit of six thousand five hundred pounds roughly uh or roughly a return of about eighty nine percent so he did far better than i did fantastic um and one of my other clients, Mark, has been posted in the Discord group today. Uh, he said that he sold up today of £2.12. 
in order to invest the funds elsewhere. He's made an 88% gain on that one. Uh, Mel has also put a message in the uh, the group saying that he's made 48.3% return on MGP and he's very happy with that. Uh, Neil also posted today saying that he made a 40% profit after buying back in December. So he's actually, if he means December 2021, then he's only been holding those shares for not even six months and he's made 40% return. So if that's the case, then he's done very well. Um, but it's, it's gone really well. Um, and it's one of these situations where, you know, we didn't really plan to sell yet. There was no plans to sell these shares just did within three years of buying them. That wasn't my plan whatsoever. I wanted to sell them at a much higher price than they're available, or much higher than £2.12. pence. And, you know, I would have held them for 20 years, for sure. Um, but when you invest in successful businesses, takeovers are likely to happen, especially if they're smaller companies. And MGP was a relatively small business. I think the takeover was about £260 million. That's how much it's cost the company to buy the, the business out and to pay off all the shareholders at £2.12 uh, £2 per share. So, you know, it's not a big business in, in, in the grand scheme of things when we're talking about, you know, many of the FTSE companies out there in the billions. So this is a relatively small company in comparison. Um, but when, and certainly when you have a company that's making the kind of profits that MGP were making, then you're going to have all these other businesses that might be looking at MGP and thinking, right, well, we, if we acquired this business, we could take them under our wing. Obviously, the profits that they're making now become our profits, but also what these larger companies can often do is they can complement and improve upon that business. So we saw this with Greg's when they took over Baker's Baker's Oven, I think it was called, uh, and they went round, and all these Baker's Oven, ch this chain of stores around the UK, were almost unprofitable. They weren't making any money. And Greg's came in and said, well, we're going to take the Greg's concept, we're going to put it into all these stores, and we're going to, and the rest is history. Greg's is now this huge, huge company. Um but they they saw this company that they could acquire and take over that really complemented the Greg's business because Greg's could come in and instead of just owning Baker's oven, they could come in and actually make some significant changes that would not only make uh, Greg's acquire all these assets that this company had, but also make this company profitable on top of what Greg's are already achieving. So it was a no-brainer for them. And it's a similar situation with when Norton took over a vast I think, was it last year? I forget now if it was 2021 or 2022. Uh, but Norton, and I think it was 2022. It doesn't seem like that long ago. But we were investors in Avast. Many of my clients were investors in Avast. It was another one of the companies that I'd identified that I liked, that I'd been tell telling my clients, you know, this is a good company. This is the price to buy it at. This is why they're great. This is what you should be paying for them. Uh, and many of my clients took, took that advice and bought uh, shares in Avast. And uh, Norton then came along and said, we're buying Avast. And obviously Norton Antivirus and Avast are very similar companies. And so it complemented Norton to do that. It made perfect sense and it gave them more of a monopoly on the, the market. And it just made perfect sense for them to do that. And uh, as shareholders, we made a lot of money on Norton coming in saying they were buying Avast. The share price suddenly skyrocketed. Uh, and there's the same thing that's happened here. So... Uh, with this company have come in, it's an investment company, not a company listed on the stock market, so we can't invest in the big parent controlling company, we can't move our investment across. They're coming in, they're buying out uh, MGP, and they're taking them, they're delisting them off the London Stock Exchange, so the, the shares won't exist anymore. And so all the shareholders are being bought out, but what the news has done is it's elevated the share price 33% today, uh, just in one day, to that two pound 12 pence level and so it makes sense at that point to just say okay i'll sell up and i'll reinvest the profits that i've made you know the capital uh into another opportunity of which there are abundance on my list right now great bargain opportunities out there companies to get invested in so this is precisely what i've done and you know like i say we weren't planning on selling we were planning on holding these for 20 years time but because this is such a successful business and they're making such good profits they were always going to attract attention and some companies some investment business has come along and said what we're going to do is we're going to buy out this company we're going to buy all the shares 
and we're going to invest the te into the technology that this company uses to massively expand it. And we won't be long for the ride. We're out of the we're out of the ride now, uh, and that's just the way it happens. And like I say, it wasn't a choice necessarily that I would have made or would have liked to stay in, but that choice is taken away when a company comes along, buys out all the shareholders, and takes the company away. And all we can do is we can then just take our profits that we've made. Uh, like I say, for me, it's about what did I say? Fifty eight was it? Fifty fifty eight point six percent. And use that profit, you know, the capital that I invested plus the profit I've made on it to reinvest that now into another opportunity, another stock that I really like. And that's what I'm doing. Um, and that is essentially what I do. That is kind of the value that I bring from all the analysis that I do for my membership. So I find wonderful stocks to invest in and I notify my membership of precisely why this is a great stock which price is the right price to be buying them at and that there's many different factors that come into play there as well uh, and what my what my members once they receive all that information from me once they've received that then it's up to them to decide what to do with that information they choose so I don't invest anyone's money I'm not in control of your funds or anything like that at all I just pr produce the analysis and then my clients make a decision based on that analysis where they want to put their capital. What stocks are they going to buy? That sort of thing. The problem is most beginner investors, they don't know which stocks to buy. They don't know why they should be buying them. They don't know which stocks to stay away from and why to stay away from them. They don't know when to buy these stocks, whether it's uh, the price is overpriced or if it's underpriced at a bargain. They don't know when to hold the stocks, when to sell the stocks. They just don't know. And so they're guessing and they, they rely upon silly stuff like, well, I've shopped there before. So it makes sense that, you know, that's a company I'll invest in because I like their product or I like their service, which is a terrible reason to invest in a business just because you like their product or service. On face value, it makes sense. You know, some people might think, well, you know, if I use their product and I like their product, they're obviously a good company. And so that makes them a good investment, maybe. But that's not the case because there are plenty of companies out there that I use that I I think their products are great, but they're, they're not profitable. They're losing money. They've got major debts. And you've got all these other problems. Uh, it, it's not necessarily um, correlated that a good product or a good service equals a great, profitably uh, well-run business. It's just not the case. Uh, and in fact, there are out of 957 stocks that I've analyzed, the vast majority of them don't tick my boxes. And so I answer all these questions. That's the value that I offer. I can show people uh, which stocks to buy, why you should buy them, which is crucial to know. You have to know that. Otherwise, you're going to be buying stocks and not having a real in, uh, idea of why you're buying them, essentially. Uh, I can tell them which stocks to stay away from. I mean, that's so the, the value is there in itself, isn't it? You know, I've, t I've warned my clients away from companies like Thomas Cook back when that was all, you know, long before it was happening because all the all the signs were there in the financials. I warned my clients away from Debenhams. I warned them away from Cineworld. You see my Cineworld video on YouTube. The amount of hate I got <laughs> from sent, from putting a video up on YouTube saying... I don't rate in a world. I would never buy them. They look like they're on the way out. And people were like, how dare you? What the hell do you think you're, t you're saying? You don't know what you're talking about. You know, and, and this was because the people watching had shares in Cineworld. So that's the last thing they want to hear is some guy coming along saying it's not good. Well, I was right. And uh, the only reason I'm right isn't because I've got crystal ball or I can see into the future. I have some magical powers it's because the, sh the, the the financials were showing that this was not going to work. Massive debts. No way of paying those debts back. This was an unprofitable company, you know. And so when you've got those kind of, just those two out of many different factors that were causing them problems, when you've got those two issues, it's not a recipe for success. And the share price plummeted. And then COVID came along and bang, that's it. That's all it took. It just took something like COVID to come along and now they're not only are they unprofitable uh, and they have these massive debts, but now they've just got no hope. There's no hope that they're going to turn this around because now 
all revenue's gone. No one's going to the cinema. So how are they going to pay these massive debts back? And it's just landed them in a real, uh, in a mess. Um, and, you know, but I warned my clients. I said to them, this is not a great business. This is not a company that we want to invest in. Stay away. You know, I did that with mother care. Um, and I will continue to do that because I'm looking at all these companies and I can identify straight away. You know, once I've done a few hours worth of analysis on that company and I've looked at all the financials, I can tell not only are they not a company that I would put on my list, but they are a company to stay away from. They're, they're scoring very poorly. Um, I tell my clients when to buy these stocks, whether they're overpriced or underpriced. You know, that's crucial. Because you don't want to be buying a company that are great under the radar or under the hood. You know, they're, they're, the financials, financials are, are good and they're making good profits, but the stocks are twice the price they should be. Well, you don't want to be buying it then because it's not a great investment at that stage. You need all these different factors to fall in line. It needs to be a wonderful business at a wonderful price. Otherwise, you shouldn't be touching it. Um, and they need to know when to hold it, when to sell it. You know, and again, I sent an email out today telling my clients of the news that come out on MGP and advising what I'm doing. And I'm not telling them they have to sell their shares at £2.12. Uh, they might decide to hold it until they actually get that £2.12 through. They might decide to hold it and find it goes up to £2.30 between now and when the takeover happens and maybe bank a little bit extra. That's up to them. All I've said today in my email to my clients is, hey guys, this is what's happening. This is the news. I've decided to do this. And that's what I've done. And yeah, and I answer questions for them. Uh, I allow them to make the most informed, profitable decisions that they can. And I love the work I do. I absolutely love this stuff. And like I say, um, I've had emails from John P. He's made something crazy like 89%, Mark made 88%, Mel has made 48.3%, Neil made 40%, there are going to be so many others that I just haven't had the chance to speak to today uh, that have made great returns on this. Gary emailed me saying he's just sold his and his son's shares in this company. I've sent him an email response saying, hey, how much did you make in terms of profit? And he hasn't got back to me yet, so I'm waiting on that. And let me just check to see if he's emailed. Uh, what, live on the podcast? No, he hasn't. <laughs> okay, so I uh, haven't had anything back from Gary yet, but uh, you know, my clients are now, as they're coming home from work or whatever it is they do, running their businesses, some of them are doctors and solicitors and dentists and some of them own corner shops and some of them are delivery drivers the real mix of clients that i have all with different size portfolios some of them are trading 4k accounts some of them have got 40 400k accounts so you know it's a real old mix but at the end of the day they're checking their emails and you know they're seeing this news and they're gonna i'm starting to get the emails come through now letting me know how things have gone today and i'll slowly uh, get a, a pretty good idea and concept of the wide range of results people have got from that one particular pick. And that's, yeah, that's basically the news today. So I just thought, you know what, this will probably make a decent podcast talking about this and so people can see that aspect of it because this happens, as you can, as I've said, you know, we've, it happened with uh, with Greg's uh, in a positive way, it happened with a uh, AVST or Avast when Norton came along and bumped up the share price just just on the news that they were going to be taken over. It bumps the share price up, you know. And then my clients, a lot of them, sold before the takeover happened, like we have today. Again, this has happened today with MGP. Now another company that's been taken off my list, out of my hands, but we've made great profits on it in that time. And when you when you find the right companies and you invest in great profitable businesses, this sort of stuff is going to happen. Companies are going to come along, they're going to take over these businesses because it makes sense for them to do that. Because it's a profitable company, it's going to add to their bottom line, and they can also probably have the capital within that larger business to look at someone like MGP and say, well, look, we've got the capital to invest into MGP where they probably wouldn't have been able to do it themselves and really invest in the technology and really expand this business and make it way more profitable than it currently is. It might be something where the company have a product or a service that just really complements what that larger company already produce. Uh, I was looking at another company and they produce... Uh, certain types of uh, product. I won't go into detail because it's exclusive to my membership. Um, 
but they produce a certain type of product and the, the last three businesses they've gone out there and acquired have been smaller companies that produce just one type of that product and so they've just acquired them and it's expanded their product range with these three other companies that's three new products that they've just put into their product range and they're very complementary products they all kind of tie in with each other um, and so they're kind of just like acquiring up these small little businesses they're going to add to their bottom line of providing these products are profitable products being sold if they are then they're just adding to the profit they're already making each year and if they can use their geographic reach and their strength and you know the brand to um, to improve the sales of those free products they've acquired then then it makes perfect sense to do it doesn't it and so this is going to happen from time to time and it's it's great because now what it's done is it's allowed us to have a nice 33 percent boost many of us have sold for over 50 percent profit on this particular stock pick that i only identified back in june 2020 and told my clients about in june 2020 and now we can use that capital to reinvest into other opportunities and so when people say you know look you look at the FTSE 100 or the FTSE 250 and so many of the companies that were on it 20 years ago don't even exist today and that scares people away it makes people think that the stock market is just a place to lose money but that's not the case many of these companies have been acquired or they've merged into other companies that still exist today you know it's not as straightforward as just companies disappearing and you lose all your money it's actually quite rare that that happens and if you're investing in companies that are highly profitable well you'll know well ahead of time if there any trouble starts because you'll read in the annual reports every year you're looking at the financials every year you'll see signs of trouble debt levels increasing revenue falling you know if, if customers aren't buying as much of the product or service anymore you'll see it in the revenue the revenue will be dropping every single year you'll see the profits going down you'll, you'll see that they'll stop paying dividends for a while and because they can't afford to do it and so all those telltale signs are there and we don't invest in those companies anyway that's the worst case scenario that's like the companies we wouldn't touch because the, all, the, all the metrics and trends are going in the wrong direction we look at the other end of that scale we're looking at the best of the best that's all we invest in just the best companies that are available and so you know it's it's one of those situations where uh yeah okay some of the companies that we identify won't exist anymore but we get paid off for that we get a big payout when companies get taken off our hands and we can't own them anymore and you know it's a good thing so um but I'm going to wrap it up. It's just, uh, that's the news. That's what's been going on in my little world. Diary of a UK stock investor. You know, it's the kind of stuff that I'm probably going to be talking about from time to time when these events happen. Um, but uh, maybe it's added some value. Maybe it's given you some insight into how these sort of things work. Uh, if you are interested in getting involved in the membership, listen, the membership's been closed all year. Uh, if you go to my website, christianandworth.com, go to the investment club, there's a big red sign, you can't get access, all the buttons have been taken off, you can't sign up for it, right? And I've been saying on the, on this podcast a few times, look, if you're interested in getting involved in it, just drop me a line, come and chat to me, and a few people have. Uh, I am looking at maybe bringing in, I've, had, I've lost one client in the last week because that person was made redundant and they no longer want to invest anymore so I said okay that's fine I get it uh, the investment club obviously isn't adding value to that person anymore why would they be paying 57 pounds a month for access to this membership where they you know they're not getting value anymore because they're not investing so it makes perfect sense that that person comes off the list and that's fine so I thought to myself, OK, but there's people on the waiting list. So if they want to come, if they if somebody wants to come along and fill in that seat, not a problem. It's no big deal for me. Um, I've had a couple of people email me uh, about this. And what I've basically said is, look, I'm going to take on. I've decided to add a few more seats to it. I'm going to take on three people. And so if you are interested in getting involved, then drop me an email. That's the best way to start getting involved because you can't. The membership's closed. It's going to be closed for the rest of 2023. The only way to get involved in the membership now for the rest of this year is to email me and to talk to me and to get to know me a little bit. I get to know you a little bit. And if it's something that, that we both feel is going to be a good fit, then come and be a part of it. And I'll show you how to come and be a part of it. So if that sounds like something you want to do, email me at chris at chrischillingworth.com. That's chris at 
Chris Chillingworth, C H R I S C H I W L I N G Worth dot com. Drop me an email, introduce yourself, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to introduce yourself, tell me what where you are in terms of your investment situation your journey have you started investing yet are you completely green which is absolutely fine totally cool we've got plenty of green members in the in the membership uh people that have come in and started with us from fresh and didn't have a portfolio until they met me uh i've got other people that are long-term veterans that have got six-figure investment accounts that just aren't getting the results they wanted to get and so they've come to me for some advice and some help and for my analysis um so give me an idea of where you are and then let me know what your goals are. What are you trying to achieve? What's the point? Why are you doing this? Why are you thinking you want to start investing in stocks? What's the grand bigger picture? Give me that information in an email and let's start chatting about it and let's start working out. Is this membership and the service that I provide a good fit for you? If it is, let's make it work. Um, but that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I hope it's been a useful episode. I hope it's added some value out there and I'll catch you guys in next week's one. Cheers. Cheers.